custom GPTs or assistance API? Which one should you use for your next project? It's hard to keep up with the constant stream of AI developments and improvements, so I made this video to cover two of the most powerful new features coming out of OpenAI called custom GPTs and the assistance API. I'm going to go over how these two are similar, how they're different, and what sort of applications you can actually build with these two powerful new features. So let's dive right in. With custom GPTs, you're building something that's really on top of ChatGPT. So your users are going to go to ChatGPT, they're gonna need a ChatGPT Plus account to access your GPTs, and they're going to use an interface that they're already familiar with. It's going to be easier for you to build, requiring no code potentially, unless you want some custom actions, and it will still be able to use a lot of the new features such as extended knowledge and code execution. On the other hand, the Assistance API is going to allow you to use code to build highly flexible applications with their own logic and their own functionality. You'll be able to design your own user interfaces, understand what's happening in these conversations, update knowledge on a regular basis, and so on. Now let's dive into a side-by-side -side comparison of the two tools and take a look at how they stack up across a number of different areas. First we'll look at developer experience and what it takes to actually build one of these. Then we'll look at the user experience and how your users are going to interact with your application. Then we'll take a look at maintenance and see what it actually takes to keep an application up and running. Then we'll look at the business opportunities and how you can actually make money using these two tools. Finally, we'll look at the use cases and figure out which is the best time to use GPTs or the Assistance API. Let's talk about the developer experience. Now, if you're just building GPTs, you don't actually need to know how to code. However, you're still a developer. You're just using natural language such as English to build your application instead of something like JavaScript or Python. So that's the biggest difference between the two. If you want to build GPTs, you can actually do everything inside of the ChatGPT interface unless you want to have some advanced actions that you want to build out. But with the Assistance API, you actually have to have your own application that's going to use this API and then create your own UI, create your own backend that's going to service your users. However, because you have all of that control, you can build something very unique and very powerful, and you have the decision between how to monetize that, which features to add, and so on. But a lot of the core features of the GPTs and the Assistance API are actually the same. So let's take a closer look at those. First of all, with both of these options, you're gonna have access to knowledge. And this is a new concept that OpenAI is using, which allows you to upload your own data and use it in these conversations. So for example, if we look at my Monster Brew GPT that I created, I was able to upload the entire Dungeons & Dragons rule set so that it could create good monsters for my game. With the Assistance API, you can similarly upload files using an API, and then your assistant will have access to data from those files that it can use in its conversations. In addition to knowledge, there's also the use of tools. With GPTs, it comes in the form of actions, and your GPT will use a certain action when it's the right time to do so. With the Assistance API, it's kind of similar, where you have access to tools such as the data retrieval and code execution, as well as function calling, which serves the purpose of using tools like the actions inside of the GPTs. You can register a number of different functions with your assistant and it will call those when the time is right, just like the actions. The other similarity between these two is that we no longer have to worry about the context of the conversation. So we don't have to store individual messages in our database or worry about which ones to submit with the latest request. All of this is just handled out of the box by OpenAI for us both with GPTs as well as the Assistance API. Now let's talk about some of the differences in terms of working with GPTs versus the API. So the first one I wanna talk about is the UI. In the case of GPTs, your users are just gonna to go to that familiar chat GPT interface and have a conversation with your GPT. This is both good in the sense that you don't have to worry about building a UI or maintaining it and adding new features. OpenAI will just do that for you. But it's also limiting because you don't have the same flexibility as you do with the Assistance API. So let's say you have a GPT that generates really cool images and you wanna look at all of the images that you generated. With GPTs, you can't really do that. But with the Assistance API, you could build an application that takes each of those images and saves it to some sort of album. Then you could take a look at that album and look across all of the pictures that you generated. That's the sort of thing that's only possible with the Assistance API. With the GPTs, 
you're limited to the chat GPT interface. Similar to the UI, in the case of GPTs, you can specify all of your logic in the GPT builder, and you don't have to worry about hosting any of that functionality on your own. With the Assistance API, you have a lot more flexibility in terms of the type of functions you wanna call, but you're gonna have to write that code and host it on your own. Another consideration is the sort of visibility and analytics you wanna have in terms of how your users are using your app. With GPTs, you basically have no idea who's using it or how they're using it, what kind of questions they're asking. With the Assistance API, on the other hand, you have a much more clear idea of when people are using it, what sort of questions they're asking, and so on. This sort of visibility can come in handy in case you want to troubleshoot how your application is working and help a user achieve a desired result. There are also some capabilities that are currently only possible with the GPTs or the API. So the first one is image generation and vision. Right now, that's restricted to GPTs only. The API will have those features eventually, but if you want to generate images, you have to use a separate API. You can't use the Assistance API. And if you want to understand what images your users are submitting, the Assistance API does not have that functionality at this moment. On the other hand, the Assistance API allows you to upload new files to be used as your knowledge base for the knowledge retrieval feature. This means that you're not locked into the files that you uploaded and you don't have to manually go and update those files through a UI. You can have a system behind the scenes just updating this knowledge all the time. We've talked a lot about the developer side, so now let's take a look at the user side of things. From a user perspective, if they're using your GPTs, that means they have to have a ChatGPT Plus account. That means they're paying 20 bucks a month already to OpenAI, then they can use your GPT. They'll be able to upload images, they'll be able to generate images, all of the bells and whistles that ChatGPT usually comes with are gonna be available for your users with your GPT. But with the Assistance API, the sky is the limit in terms of the user experiences that you can build. You could use the API in a video game and have different assistants back different NPCs to have unique and wonderful conversations. You could use it to query databases or have some kind of multi-user note editing experience. So you could use the Assistance API to go far beyond what's possible with GPTs. Now that you've built this awesome thing, let's take a look at what it takes to actually maintain it. In the case of GPTs, it's dead simple. You don't really have to do much. The GPT is just gonna be out there, so you don't have to worry about any of the hosting, any of the software updates, building new user experiences, and so on. You just build it, and then if you wanna update it, you can always tweak the instructions, add some new knowledge, maybe a couple of new actions, but overall, the maintenance effort when it comes to GPTs is gonna be pretty low unless you wanna have a bunch of custom actions that you host on your own server. On the other hand, with the Assistance API, you're basically responsible for everything. So you're gonna to have to manage your users, issue software updates, make sure everything is secure, handle any kind of scalability issues that may come up. It's really just an application that you maintain that OpenAI is a part of. So you're embedding all of this powerful code into your application, but ultimately, just like any other developer, you're gonna to have to maintain your software. One additional thing to consider in terms of maintenance is the API costs that come along with the Assistance API. You don't really have to worry about any of those costs with GPTs, but with the Assistance API, you're gonna be paying for all of the tokens that your users use. So you really need to have an eye on how your application is being used. But let's look on the flip side and look at the business opportunities that come with both of these options. So with GPTs, right now, there's no way to actually earn money with these. However, OpenAI has announced that they're planning to share some of their revenue with the creators of the most successful GPTs. So we can expect to see a sort of GPT store in the future, and perhaps that will be a way to actually make money with GPTs. Even if that comes to be, it's still going to be hard to differentiate your GPT and show value over all of the other GPTs that people are gonna be making. So with the Assistance API, your users are not required to have ChatGPT+. That means you could potentially build a freemium sort of model where you offer some basic features to your users for free, and then they can upgrade to paid tiers. And that money is going directly to you instead of to OpenAI. So I think the path to value and profit really lies a lot more with the Assistance API because you have a lot more control and flexibility in terms of the things that you build. Even with all of the similarities and differences laid out, it can still be a challenge to choose whether to use GPTs or the Assistance API. So let's take a look at a few different use cases to help you get a feel for when you would use one or the other. 
I'm going to give a description of a number of different use cases, and after I finish describing each one, I want you to pause the video for a second and see if you can figure out whether it would be better to use GPTs or the Assistance API for that particular use case. Afterwards, I'll tell you which one I would use and why I would take that approach. All right, let's get started. So first use case is going to be to build something that takes a picture of a plant, identifies it, and gives us different uses and information about it. What do you think? GPTs? or Assistance API. For this use case, I would use GPTs. They have vision out of the box, so we can take advantage of that, and we don't really need to build a highly customized UI. So we'll just settle with GPT, and sure, we might limit our users to only Chat GPT Plus users, but I think that's appropriate in this situation. Next up, we want to build something that answers users' questions on a customer's website. So when they arrive to the website, the users can go and talk to the chat bot and ask questions about the products or services of the company. What do you think, GPTs or Assistance API? So in this case, you kind of have to use the Assistance API. And it can be sort of counterintuitive because it's just a basic chat interface. You're just using knowledge, right? There's no actions. So why do we need to use the Assistance API? It's because we're trying to embed this chat bot on a different website, so it's not going to use the ChatGPT interface. We don't want to require the visitors of this website to go to ChatGPT and be ChatGPT Plus subscribers to have access to information about the products and services on this site. For the next one, let's build a Spotify DJ that recommends songs for us based on our playlist and can even start music for us when we ask it to. What do you think, GPTs or the API? You could probably build this using either approach, but I would personally choose to use GPTs because you can accomplish everything that you want using the Actions feature. For the next use case, let's build something that helps authors keep track of their world, their different lore, different characters, different parts of their book. Which approach would you take? For this use case, I think the Assistance API would be a better option because it gives me a lot more flexibility in terms of how I organize all of this information about the author's world. So I could have all these different notes of people or places that I generated for my world, and I could view them in different sets and have them all interconnect and so on. And this is something that's just not possible in ChatGPT, so I think creating a custom interface for this sort of application would make sense. Although I could see somebody getting creative with a GPT and integrating it with something like Obsidian or Notion and generating things in the GPT and then loading it into the other application. I think this is highlighting a new sort of architecture that might emerge where people generate things inside of the GPTs and then store them somewhere else. So at a high level, GPTs are gonna be a lot easier to put together because you don't have to maintain a UI, you don't even have to write any code, you can do it all through the chat GPT interface, but your users are gonna be restricted to what's already there. The Assistance API, however, does require you to code, you will have to maintain things and manage users and so on, but the sky's the limit in terms of what you can create. It's super flexible and allows you to build something really powerful and differentiated. So, GPTs or Assistance API? Check out these videos to learn more details about each one. I'll see you there.